All right, lads, welcome back to the video, or the channel, I guess, rather. I was going to do this premium guide for the aviation, but then my friend rang me and said, do you want to climb a mountain? So I went and climbed the Old Man of Connison yesterday, so we're doing this video today. My apologies. So, Saturn is always going to be as quick as possible, because there's loads of premiums to cover. Rank 1 premiums are never really worth it of any nation. Half of these you can't even get anymore, you can't get that. I think you can get that, but it's not very good. This thing's always been good. I think it is still good. The BF109 F4. It's a solid grinder. I'm not sure how much it is. As you can tell, I'm going to be owning the majority of these premiums. The BF109 F4. It's one of the more turn fighty BF109s comparatively to the others. You only get 120 in the nose, but it's still good for grinding. I wouldn't recommend the A6M2. The Zero's not at all similar to any of the other American fighters, so it's a pretty bad way to learn. I just wouldn't get it really. It is a good plane, but it's just not... It doesn't set you up for learning the American tech tree that well. BTD, it is fantastic for naval, as you can carry two torpedoes. Quite a niche subject though. Also has two 20mm cannons in the nose. Very, very powerful plane for ground attack. For ground attack rather. XP-50. This thing is apparently incredibly good. It climbs very well. Do you have quite limited ammunition, only 120 cannon rounds. 250 cows as well. I think you only get the early round belts though, maybe. Yeah, you only get the early war belts. So not the most firepower in the world, but it climbs like a rocket, 20 meters per second. Better than the BF-109. Oh, it's the same. You have the climb rate of a BF-109, which is a single engine fighter. So this thing is a bit of a rocket. The P-61A11, this is total garbage. Don't get it. If we compare the rate of climb, 11.2 meters per second. We compare that with the Tetri one. That is 16 meters per second. You just lose so much power as well. The, the top speed of that is 692, whereas this is 582. So you're basically losing like 110 kilometers of speed, mainly because this thing just hasn't got the engine power. Avoid this like uh, the Black Death. P51 D10, you don't think you can get this for Golden Eagles, but it's a very good pack premium. Basically like a D20, except you get, I think you get more bombs. Or you used to be able to. The D20 though, this thing's quite good. It gets played a lot by people who don't really know how to play it, which kind of pushes its battery rating down all the time. It's quite good at 4.3 if you know how to fly it, that's all I'm going to say. The P38K, if this ever comes back on sale, I'd highly recommend it. This thing has got ridiculous climb rate, 24 meters per second. Just doesn't have any herberic, so you can't really pull out of a dive if you get into it. It's like the early model airframe. Whereas the L's did get the Urbrakes. I don't have the XA-38. It is armed with the 75mm gun from a Sherman, I believe. Or it uses the same ammunition as the Sherman. Oh yeah, the same ammunition found on the M4 Shermans, the early war ones. A lot of people have been using these to good effect in ground battles. But obviously quite niche. You can take bombs in it as well, I think. Not the highest bombs, only 500 pounders. Quite limiting, but... The P-47M1, this is one of the best grinders in the game for the Americans. It's the same kind of playstyle as all of the other American planes, except this thing has a metric shit ton of power in it. Again, not a Golden Eagle premium, but it's still very nice to have. A1, can't get that, but it's very good. The Focke Wolf 190, A8, these things have been nerfed into the ground recently. They've changed the flight models to make them less agile in a turn. I'd stay away from it. Again, like the Zero, it's just not similar in any way to all of the other American planes. F2G, pretty cheap on the Guardian Marketplace. I'd recommend getting that as well. Kind of like the P-47M. It's just a good all-round American grinder. So, the Space Fires used to be one of the best grinders in the game for the American... Well, for, I think, Britain, America, and the Russians get, a, get one of these bad boys. So the LF-9C, it gets four, four rifle caliber machine guns and two 20s. It kind of gets dipped about a little bit at 5.7. The meta is kind... You get dragged up in battery rating as well quite a lot. It's a turn fighter at a high battery rating where most people can just extend and come back on top of you. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd rather just spend actual money and get the P-47 and pack or another premium. A2D, this thing used to be incredibly overpowered in aerialistic battles, but I think they've changed it now. Used to be able to rush bases with it pretty effectively. 
does get two torpedoes, so it's also good for naval. The F7F, that's a marketplace premium. The F89Bs and Ds, again, these things used to be really good fun. They've got proximity fuse warheads in the uh, rockets here. It's a n not the best for grinding because you have to obviously buy the B to get the D. The B, though, six 20mm cannons, same guns found on the F2 Sabre, I believe, or similar kinds of guns to the F2 Sabre. Very high muzzle velocity, very easy to aim. The only downside is this plane overspeeds quite easily and it does um it gets quite stiff when you go in at high speeds, which makes it quite hard to aim. I think it also struggles to roll as well, which makes it hard. It's basically fantastic guns, but hard to get the guns on target. That is basically um That is basically the playstyle of the F eighty nine Ds. Good firepower but hard to actually get them on target. F-35, I don't think that's actually for sale anymore, but it's garbage. AV-8A, it's a plane that I don't own. It did get flares recently, or well, the last couple of updates. So it is a very, it's a decent grinder, but with the 8 and a this thing's probably a better pick. Just a good all-round plane. It's not the best in ground realist, in a realistic, sorry. Do you kind of get, well, you've got plenty of flares to avoid incoming missiles, but... If an enemy gets above you and gets into an energy advantage, you kind of bone no matter what you do. Also, not the best for ground realistic. It's quite slow and cumbersome and you get shot down very easily by both gun SBA and missile SBA. F5C, probably the still the best rank 6 American premium. It's only got aim 9 E's, but they can they still do work at 10.3. You know, they're not really the main way of getting kills in the F5. You are going to be getting gun kills, or you should be trying to get gun kills more. The F5C is not the most powerful or the fastest point, but if you get on someone's 6, you're an absolute bugger to get off your tail. So just try and dive on people and then get gun kills, really. The missiles are just there as a bonus. Also get 60 countermeasures, so not totally help, not totally useless, but just be conservative with your flare use. The A6C tram... This thing with the battle rating increase of all the tanks now, so it's like 10.3 meta. The tram may now be a fantastic addition for ground realistic battles. I don't have this obviously unlocked, but you can you can take an absolute metric ton. I'd say that the A10A is far better in ground... I'd say that the A6E is far better than the A10 in ground realistic battles. You've just got PGMs or precision, precision guided munitions. So you can just go all day with it really this thing's a beast in a realistic though it's kind of just the same issue as the a10 you don't have an internal gun you have to carry a gun pod you can carry four or three aim 9 l's and a gun pod so quite a potent air to air loadout but all your performance in terms of killing power is missile you just the plane is just a brick really it doesn't really uh, maneuver that well then have the a6 well, not the A6, I'm around about the F4S, sorry. I don't even know why I got those two mixed up. This thing is a killing machine. I don't know why I've gone on the armor. So, 20mm gun mounted externally underneath the plane. This is a former US, well, it is a US Navy modernization. So, we don't have the M61 Vulcan. We've got a gun pod, basically. It's not a bad thing, though, to be honest. In return, though, we do get, we do get that fantastic radar system. We also get aim 9 hitches, I believe. For, so, four aim 9 hitches. They don't really have an advantage over the Gs, mainly just internal differences. They're a little bit better, or maybe a little bit more flow resistant, but they're certainly not the best IR missiles in the game. We can also take the aim 7F, which is probably one of the best missiles in the game. Kind of gets overshadowed by the R27ER ER now, but. Considering most of, the, well, all of the Soviet points can only carry two R27ERs, where you can carry four. This is certainly, I'd say this is probably the best premium in War Thunder at the minute. Out of all of the top tier premiums, that might be different, but that's what I would say is probably the best point. Again though, not on sale, so kind of doesn't matter. So, rank 1 Germany, also not really worth buying any of the points. The GU87 Libya though, that is quite a decent plane if you really want it. Carry a 1000 kilo bomb, so you can use this in ground battles up to like rank 3 pretty easily. Um, you obviously won't be able to grind out any planes that well, but if you're going to be playing like a 4.3 tank lineup, 
the Ju87 is, is a, still a good plane. A, a 1000 kilo bomb certainly kills anything that lands near it. Everything else though, not really. Then go into the second rank. IL-2, not really recommend it. It's not really that effective. It's mainly relying on 250 kilo bombs. You don't even get any of the rockets with it. Same thing for the Wellington, really. It's just not really got a meta anymore. You've only got rifle caliber machine guns as well for defense. Not that great. Yak 1B, it used to be quite a nippy kind of turn fighter or energy fighter. Haven't played this in a while. E7, that's very, very expensive. The BV2838, this is kind of trolly. It's very hard to kill, especially if you're in like a down tier. It's not the best for grinding, to be honest. Bombers, you kind of angers your teammates when you play a bomber. I'd stick away from bombers for grinding, to be honest, apart from the JU87, but we'll get onto that shortly. The D16R3, the front, the Hitler bolt as they used to be called, they're always very good. Eight uh, 50 caliber machine guns certainly aren't a joke. We also get the late war belts, I believe, the APITs. So very, very lethal if you can get anywhere close to a target. TA154, this thing has 230s and 220s. I absolutely used to love this plane, but apparently it's not the best anymore in the meta. I think it used to get an earth spawn as well. It might still do. It's an interceptor spawn, maybe. I always enjoy this plane. It is only the short barrel 30s though, so they're not really that potent in ground realistic or against enemy infantry units in uh, realistic. The uh, This thing they added recently, the only, it's only got a torpedo. But if we look at the torpedo here, it can only drop it at speeds of um, 281 kilometers per hour. So if you are going to use this in naval, you have to basically go so slow that you'd be shot down by anything. Can't get the D anymore, that used to be the old Hitlerbolt. The LA5FN, this thing is actually quite a good grinder. Probably one of the best points to get at 3.7. Probably outcompetes the P47D in terms of flight characteristics, but the LA5N is limited in its firepower. Only 220s. This thing is played kind of like a Focker Wolf. You want to bait people into like diving on you and then do like some rolls and then try and reverse them. It's not the best climber. It's pretty decent in speed. But you will probably be outclimbed by a lot of your opponents. HE219 is kind of a TA154 with two extra long barreled 30mm. A lot of people play this and basically ground pound in a realistic to go and kill like medium tanks. It's it's very heavy, it's very cumbersome. It does have early radar, which isn't really helpful at all in War Thunder, but I guess that's a gimmick you can add for it. The old trusty D13, this is a Fock wolf that was designed to be used at very high altitudes it's no one ever climbs high enough to actually use that extra power that you get at a high altitude it's a decent plane to be honest you can take some pretty good bombs with it a 500 kilo and then two uh, 50s i usually may use this for ground strike in my 5.3 lineup but in terms of an actual grinder in ur abbey i wouldn't really recommend it anymore the B2, this thing has the long barrel 30s, great for getting bomber kills, or it used to be. Also, pretty heavy bomb load as well. I do use this quite a lot in my, I think it's 6.3 German lineup. You can use your 30 millimeters to go through basically all your, um, like American tanks generally don't have the best armor on top or the sides. So you've got 77 millimeters of pen, you can go pretty much straight through it. Tempest Mark V, this thing used to be an absolute beast but it's kind of fell on out of the meta it doesn't get the 150 octane fuel like the british one does the focke wolf 90 c again it's always been kind of <sighs> it was really bad when they first introduced it so they dropped its battery rating down quite a lot i think they did something funky with the engine i can't remember what they did something about cooler maybe i don't you don't you know it's not a golden eagle premium anyway the ju288 might be coming up in the sale next week or the next couple of weeks. Probably the best grinder if you're wanting to play a bomber role. It kind of kills the matchmaker though. You just get half a team of bombers and then you kind of get destroyed by a full team of fighters. That's a moral decision up to you. The Seahawk, a plane that was very, very bad when it was first introduced. But now it's actually quite a good in the emerging, excuse me, in the emerging meta it's actually quite good. Two AM9Bs, which don't sound much, but this is a battery in 8.0, don't remember. 
So in the 8.0 meta where most people don't have missiles or floats, the AIM-9Bs are pretty potent. It's also very good in ground realistic if you play like an 8.3 or an 8.0 German lineup. Lots of RP3 rockets which aren't the best but they do have a very high explosive filler. So the splash damage will kill any light vehicles very easily. One of the oldest premiums, I, I think I bought this as soon as it came out. And it was kind of disappointing but now I actually quite like it. G91R4, I think you can still get this. Obviously you've still got your Nords. Probably the best air to ground jet for the Germans. Especially up until around like 10.0. Well, it's probably the best one until you get the Tornado at 11.3, to be honest. If this is on sale, it's a pretty decent plane. It's more... I wouldn't really use this for uh, realistic, to be honest. It's not the best plane. It's got good missile loadouts, but the, it's quite underpowered, really, and it loses a lot of speed when turning. It's just not a great fighter, to be honest. So if you want it for ground realistic, I'd recommend it, but for uh, realistic grinding, not at all. The SPSK, this thing has a choice between a gun pod or flurs. I usually run the gun pod. I prefer having the gun than having flurs. You can make it work. It's a little tricky, but with the advent of all of the other 10.0 premiums like the A10 and the SU25, which have all aspect missiles, it can be very hard to dodge them. But again, that's a question where, to be honest, I'd probably recommend getting a Lazar M. It's the same plane, pretty much, with a better engine and better missiles, and it has flares. So, yeah. When this goes on sale, I'd highly recommend it. You can see I've got a test drive of it. There should be a video coming soon. I did play this when it first came out, but never had a chance to actually make a video on it, because I had so much to do. This has very potent air to missiles. You also have the R-13Ms. Pretty decent long-range or longer-range IR missiles. You also have a... A rather antiquated choice of air to ground, but the S24s are certainly no joke. 25 kilos of TNT, very nasty. But, yeah, I'd probably go for the Lazar over the MiG-21. Anyway, onto the Soviets. Again, not really any rank 1 sticking out to us. The Catalinas do have quite a heavy bomb load for a low tier, so 1,000 pound bombs. You also have the 1,000 depth char or 1,000 pound depth charges. I guess you can make that work. It's one that I've been meaning to buy, really, but I've never really got round to it because I don't really see a point. All these are event vehicles, I believe. The P40E1, very, very good plane. The only problem is it doesn't get a very good Silver Lion multiplier. Got a good bomb load, though. 500 kilo bomb. Certainly no joke. Very good as a backup in ground realistic as your cast plane. Also good for getting kills in a realistic but you just don't get a lot of rewards for it i don't know why they i don't know why gaijin hates the p40s but every p40 premium has a very low reward modifier it is only the e model though not the q so your climb rate isn't going to be that well it's still a pretty decent fighter though and i actually quite enjoy playing these that's an event vehicle the hurricane mark 2b again similar to the p40 it's a good plane it's got 20 millimeter cannons they actually took the British cannon, oh, the the, tornado, the Hurricanes never actually had cannons, they had 8 or 12 rifle calibers. The Soviets put two Shavaks into it. It's a very good plane, but instead of nerfing its battery rating by like, increasing its battery rating, they just decided to nuke its reward multipliers. So 240% Silver Lion modifiers, that's nothing really. Especially compared to some of these other planes which have upwards of like 600 or approaching 600. It's a bit shitty really because some of the best and most enjoyable points in the game just give you nothing in return. P39K1, it's alright, it's nowhere near as good as the P38N that you can get sometimes. Different ammo loadout, different engine I believe. Kind of jumping ahead of it a little bit. The I6, this thing has cannons as, again. It's a good turn fighter with good weapons but at 3.3 you're kind of losing out the turn fighter meta. You kind of get outclimbed and out-energied by a lot of the other players. Kind of a little bit of a scavenger playstyle. I don't have it. It's a decent plane. I wouldn't really recommend it though. You're kind of going to get dominated by anything bigger than you. Then move up to the third rank. The B25GA. I always enjoyed this plane. It gets the Soviet 500 kilo bombs. So you're not using the... I think the Americans have... I think it has three 1,000 pounders. 
but the Soviet 500 kilos typically are a lot more lethal. Not really the best for ground realistic, but you can use it to grind in air realistic. You also have this six forward firing 30, uh, not 30, the six forward firing 50 cal, sorry. Pretty deep. A lot of people will go head on with you. A lot of fighters not realizing that you do have such a heavy weapon load. You only get the, uh, you don't get the high, you only get the early war belt, so, but pretty decent. The Soviet P-47, again, like the German one, always a good pick. You will get out-climbed, but you can always just out-fight yourself. P-63A, this has good bombs, 250 kilo, good in ground realistic as a backup cast plane, bit of a multi-role jet. This thing's quite rare, I believe. It's very, very old premium. P-39N, P 30, P if you can get that in the future, highly recommend it. You lose the wing-mounted guns, but you get better performance, and it's very very good uh, grinder rank 4 the la7 this is one of the rarer premiums that you can get it's not available for the golden eagles but it's very very good very fast below 5k i believe also kind of like the la5n you kind of want to bait people into fighting you and then reverse them the 190d9 wouldn't recommend it it's not very good at turning it's a pure energy fighter really and you will get out climbed quite a lot 15.8 meters per second climb rate not the best to be honest su6 i wouldn't bother ground attacker not really potent at all be6 again kind of like the bv238 it's got a good selection of bombs but it just doesn't really um you can't really use it for anything these are very very powerful in like maybe in ground realistic but you are a massive lumbering target and it will take you quite a long time to fly to the actual bombing zone su8 that's a piece of junk la11 it's another like kind of rare plane that they bring back every couple of years. Not really worth it though. You lose one of the 23mm in the nose. And you also have worse performance overall. The Yak-3 VK107 on the other hand is probably one of the best 5.7 premiums in the game. You are quite limited in your cannons. Only two 20mm and they both have the both different actual gun variations. I don't know why. But very very good climb rate for a Soviet plane. You're obviously just going to struggle if you aren't very good at aiming because you will run out of cannons very, very quickly. SU-11, it has been put up in battle rating recently, but it is still as powerful as ever. you got a 37mm and two 23mm, kind of like an early MiG-15 um, MiG loadout. You also have, I use this as a cast point in a ground realistic, 500 kilo bombs or two 250s, and the 250s separate one each, I believe. So you can get two kills pretty easily. MiG-15 base-ish, another ground attacking version of the MiG-15. Not really that good. You can't disable these, they'll get rid of them, so it adds quite a lot of drag. Don't think you can actually get this anymore. It's kind of decent. It's a premium MiG-15 base. That's actually a lower battle rating than the MiG-15 base. But yeah, MiG-17 AS. That used to be a, I think it's a guide and store premium. That might be going on sale. Not really the best though. You probably better get, well, you are better getting one of these. SU7B MK, it's 9.3 and it doesn't get any flurs. So you get shot down by A10s and they just laugh at you very, very, very naughtily. It's absolute pain. Like I see people flying these and I just want to tell them everything will be okay. Anyway, the R13300. <sighs> Not going to recommend it. It's just not that great. The SU-25K, it's a very, very good multi-role plane. It's obviously subsonic and you do rip your wings trying to go like, over 700 kilometers per hour or something. It's okay. It's quite good in uh, realistic. It's not the best in ground realistic. You get shot down very easily. Kind of like the A-10 syndrome. They kind of like go and think they're going to be destroying every tank. Forgetting that the A10 and the SU25 were used for counterinsurgency more than actual peer on peer combat for the last 30 years. So, all the footage you see is kind of not realistic. You will get shot down very quickly in both air and ground realistic if you aren't paying attention. So, <sighs> it's a choice rule between the MiG 23 ML and the SU25 K. The ML is obviously a better point in general, but you have to really know how to. This thing you can. You can do well in uh, and real and uh, and ground with the SU-25, but the MiG-23 is a pure air-to-air -air fighter. 
and top tier isn't really the best most hospitable place to be at the minute so if you're a new player i wouldn't recommend buying a top tier jet but the su 25k is a better pick for a newer player onto the brit bonds all right gavna again rank one nothing here the wiraway is always a nice point if you're an australian fan very very nice camouflage for 250 pound bombs or two 250s and two 500s sorry the frontal armament is uh very bad though two rifle caliber machine guns the Boston, the DB7, and I believe there's another one. These are both premiums that you can get. That one's French, that one's British. That's the difference between them. That's got French guns. You can get these very, very cheaply in the Gaijin store. Not uh, Gaijin Marketplace, sorry. Wouldn't recommend them, though. The Avenger, pretty decent for naval if you want to play that, but not many people do. Same torpedo as the... Oh, it's the Avenger. The same torpedo as the Avenger, would you imagine? The Ventro, I think that's a Golden Eagle premium. Pretty, uh, it used to be 2.7 that they've, up, they've up-tiered it. Not the best. You still only get 8 rifle caliber machine guns when a lot of other Spitfires... Oh, they soon get the 20 millimeters, I believe. The uh, Fleet Uram Hurricane. Basically just a regular Hurricane that's been reinforced to make it cap uh, carrier-capable landing. It's alright. I think that they only brought that back for 100 year anniversary or something. Corsair, I would highly recommend this plane. It's an American Corsair, but they cut the wings off it to make it fit into British flight decks. When they folded the wings up, I think the British ceilings were lower, so they couldn't have the full wings. This means that the Corsair, or this version of the Corsair, rolls a lot better, but obviously it doesn't have as much lift. So your turning performance is a little bit worse, but the roll rate is a lot improved. The Martlet, this thing's awful. Can't get that, it's awful anyway, don't get that. Boomerangs are very, very good. I bought both of them. What is the difference between these two planes, you might ask? Well, if you see here, we can see this one has a round exhaust. And this one has a funneled exhaust. Or like a... It's got these little things on it. Probably to increase the surface area to help with cooling. But that is the difference between the two. There's nothing else. So if you get the first one, don't buy the second one. You don't really need it. Hellcat Mark II, this is a great all-rounder, you can use it for naval and as a uh, close air support jet, well, close air support plane in ground realistic. It's a pretty decent turn fighter, I mainly use it for ground realistic though, not really for air realistic. It's kind of like a mini, a mini P-47. Mark B-1, I don't think you can get that anymore, is a little bit outdated though, it's only got three propellers, it's only got three it's only got, I don't even know what you call it, three blades on its propeller, whereas the Tetri one has four. I had a brain freeze then. Thunderbolt Mark 1, again, it's a premium P-47. Very, very good for close air support. Pretty decent in air realistic, but not the best. Mustang Mark 1, it's got four 20mm cannons, but the cannon rounds are pretty, they're not the best, to be honest. I kind of avoid this, it kind of, it's not got a very good climb rate, but it has a lot of firepower. People buy this thinking it's like a, a a real good plane just because of its firepower, but you just can't get high enough or above people. You're a boom and zoomer that doesn't have the power to zoom, so that's a very expensive plane. It's good though. MB5, that's rubbish. Wyvern, probably the best British grinder. You can use this plane at 4.0 to grind literally up to 8.0, 8.7. I'd seriously recommend getting the Wyvern or the Wyvern, I don't know which was the proper pronunciation yeah wyvern without a doubt one of the best premiums in the game and in war thunder hornet this thing's it doesn't have the i don't think it does it have the no it doesn't have the high octane fuel i believe this thing gets yeah so they added it for this one but not for the mark one they could add it in the future that would make it a pretty decent plane it kind of gets out climbed though by everything I don't know if you get an Earthspawn anymore. I think you used to. It's not bad. You just can't really... It's out of the meta a little bit. The Clip Wing or the Reconnaissance Spitfire. This thing again. That's not the Reconnaissance one. Is it the Reconnaissance one? I mean, yeah, I think there's a camera in there. Anyway. This thing, it's like one of the Griffin Spitfires with Clip Wings. Which makes it better in the roll rate. But not as good when it comes to actually turning. Not the best. It's quite hard to play really. The 14C. 
bit of a monster. Kind of got the we got the Griffin engine in the Merlin Earthframe. Very very powerful. You will get outturned by a lot of the other Spitfires, but it is a nice little plane. This is probably the best Spitfire if you are going to buy one. It's kind of like the Ameri the American Spacefire. Same issues really. Nice. I don't know, probably shouldn't show that. Might get banned on YouTube. But anyway, decent plane. Kind of out of the meta though. Hunter FGA9, a oh, lol, don't buy that. One of my most played planes in War Thunder, but now it gets absolutely destroyed in the meta. The Attacker, probably one of the best beginner jets after the SU-11. Quite hard to play. It's quite slow to accelerate, but you do have pretty decent uh, energy retention. The Reaper, not sure you can get this anymore. Pretty good for cast, but not so good for actual air combat. Sea Vixen, I'd give this a miss. While well, it does have good performance and good missiles, it's quite hard to get kills with it. If your enemy is paying attention, they can easily dodge the missiles. But it will be quite frustrating for a newer player if you don't really know how to set up missile kills quite easily. GR1. This thing used to be the Terror of the Skies when it was first introduced, but now it's kind of useless. It doesn't have flurs at 9.0, at 9.7. So you're just an easy kill to anything that sees you, basically. The F4J, the UK version, it's kind of the same as the American F4S, basically. It's not as modernised as the F4S. We also have less potent weapon systems. Whereas the American one got the AM9H, we get the Gs. And the American got the AM7F, whereas we only have the dogfights, the Sky Flash ones. Not a very good plane, in my opinion. You do see them flown out quite a lot, though. We also don't have any ground strike options, or we don't have any precision guide ground strike option sorry so we don't have our enemy gbus or laser guided bombs you can't really use it for cast in top tier you don't really want to be getting anywhere near the battlefield to drop bombs or rockets you're just asking to get shot down by a panzer so while it can be used for grinding out the british tech tree or rb it's quite a hard pick really britain doesn't really have a great premium probably this is the best one for the british so only the real one you have i get the Wyvern, grind as much as you can, and then maybe get one of these. I'll put a Talisman on one of these other planes. So for the Japanese, nothing really of any notice in rank 1. The F4U, this is an absolute favourite of mine. I used to play this all the time. I think I've actually got an ace crew on it. Yeah, I've played it so much. I absolutely love this plane. We get the... It's only the early war belts, but if you use the Universal, it's actually pretty good. This thing used to be 2.7 for the long for the longest time, but they've up up tiered it recently to 3.0, but it is still just as good as it ever was. While you aren't the best climber, because you have the Japanese on your team, it's kind of like you basically counter the other American players, whereas the, basically I'd get this easily. It's a very good investment. It allows you to learn the American play style with the you're learning the American play style, but you have the fantastic win rates of the Japanese teams. So, easily my favourite pick. Any new players, I'd highly recommend getting this plane. The E7, a good, another good plane. It's harder to get kills with than the F4, F4U, in my opinion. It's more of a dedicated energy fighter. You also have weapons that are a bit harder to use. You've got less ammunition for them. Uh, it's alright. The KI-100, not a favourite of this. This thing used to be 3.0 back in the day and it was an absolute monster. We then updated it to 3.7 where it's, it's still decent but it's nowhere near as good as it used to be. 8.8k, this thing's an absolute beast. It's absolutely huge. As you can see, it's kind of a... My hanger is kind of wonky. Not really useful to be honest. It's nice for me to have because... But yeah, it's a massive plane, banana boat. K96, not really worth it. The P51C, this thing has a late war belts, I believe. So late war 50 cal belts at 3.7. Very, very good. Kind of like the British Mustang though, where it's got good firepower, but you might struggle to get above people. This is probably, along with the F4U, one of the better planes to get for the Japanese. Like the American... 190 A5 or the A8. I wouldn't recommend getting this one. Decent firepower, but very bad turn rate. 
Mm, they've kind of the the fuck walls have fell off really badly. The Ki sixty one is kind of like a Japanese. It's all right to be honest. It's got a very high reward. It's not the best. It's it's just such a different playstyle from all of the other Japanese planes. You're better sticking with the zeros to be honest, rather than the Ki sixty ones. They don't really have any advantage whatsoever apart from nominally better firepower. A seven M one. Pretty decent, just like a chubby Zero. I believe this was the intended replacement for the Zero. I might be wrong there though. A6 M6C, this was a reward. It's very good if you can get it cheaper on the market. The J2 M1, this thing is absolutely, well it used to be an absolute beast. I think it's not that good anymore. It's basically a J2 with a turbocharger or a supercharger, I'm not sure. It was a high altitude plane for intercepting American bombers. Not the best turner. But it's a trading firepower for climb rate, basically. The A6M5 Co. Not sure if you can get this anymore. I believe they used to get it with the Pacific Campaign Pack, but I think they changed the rewards. It's it's very very good though. The J2M2. It's basically a J2M3, but except it has. Wait for it, boys. It's got two absolutely huge 30 mm cannons. These things. With ground target belts penetrate 23mm, so not the best to be honest. I'd use the tracer belts. Yeah, the n it's not a very effective plane to be honest. It's got a very, very good performance. It's got the same performance as the J2M2, except you're losing like the easy to use firepower. But it's a very rewarding plane to play. You've got great flight characteristics, but the weapons are quite hard. I wouldn't recommend it if you're a new player. This thing's probably the best premium to have in the Japanese tech tree but it's very very expensive now. B-17E don't even bother, that thing don't even bother, Japanese P-47 but it's kind of got nerfed into the ground. The That thing it's actually de it's quite decent, it gets missiled easily though because it's only 9.0 and doesn't have flows. T-2 early, mm, I think they might have removed that from sale but it's pretty crap. The F-4EJ ADTW this is probably the worst premium phantom in the game for getting er to work kills. But we do have a lot of er to ground weapons for... It's not good for ground realistic, but for er realistic, if you're trying to ground pound, then this is a very good plane. This is probably the best premium for earning silver lines though, at least in terms of er premiums. You got like an 800% reward multiplier. Just realise though that you aren't going to be getting... A lot of kills with this you're going to be getting like bombing bases and bombing pillboxes and stuff like that so if you're a dedicated ground player or you want to ground pound then this is a good plane but it's probably the weakest premium phantom in it term and in terms of er to work killing capabilities china quite uh we're getting into the nations now which don't have as many premiums so hopefully we'll get this wrapped up pretty soon so i'm not wasting any more time all these are pretty useless. The K, that's useless as well. This is a premium P40, basically, under the Taiwanese designation. A6M2, not the best. The K84, KI84 Co, this is quite a good premium. Only got the two 20 mils. You don't get the four 20 mils that you find on the other one. What is it called? It's in here somewhere. K84? They're not, did they remove it? No, it's in the Japanese one, that's why. There's one in the Japanese Tetri at 5.7, which has 420mm. That's a very good point. The A4G, this thing gets an Earth spawn. And with your Earth to ground weapons, you can basically like ground pound at the start of an Earth realistic battle and get a little bit of points that way. Very weak engine, very bad energy retention, or very bad maneuvering energy retention. So if you turn, you'll lose a lot of speed very quickly. So not the best for dogfighting, but you can be kind of a little bit of a vulture. Shenyang F5. Afterburning MiG-17 airframe. Nice camouflage, not really that important. Can use it for ground pounding. In the old meta, this used to be very, very good. But now they added loads of advanced air to air missiles and you kind of get destroyed. Also no flurs. So stick away from this. A5C, probably the best premium for the Chinese. Very good air to ground loadout. Good air to air loadout. The guns are a little bit bad, the energy retention is pretty good. It's basically a premium MiG-19 with better missiles. J7D, it's a modification of the MiG-21. I can't remember what exactly they did to it. 
it does get the fantastic missiles we get the pl7s the pl5bs and the pl2s you can take a varied choice so you can take like two pl7s and two pl5s i believe these things have better turning performance but these things have more longer range i think that's right it's a pretty decent point to be honest i haven't bought it because i've got all these things or gaijin gave me this and then they added all these i can't really be asked playing uh, realistic anymore on to the italians this thing used to be quite good i'm not sure if you can still get it anymore though this thing's a meme i don't think i've actually ever flown that plane spitfire it's a pretty decent pickup i use it in my 3.7 lineup as just like a closer support jet you don't have any bombs for it but you can use it for like killing any incoming enemy bombers the bf 110 g4 this is a great plane again not sure if you can actually buy this but you do get a huge i think you can buy it actually yeah they added it a couple of patches ago very good for closer supporting low tier ground realistic again i use it in my 3.7 lineup then have the g55s this used to be my favorite plane in the game if you're a long time subscriber you've probably seen loads of videos on this thing they put it up from 4.7 to 5.0 which kind of messed with its performance a little bit he started getting up tiered quite a lot we still have three 25 uh, 20 millimeter mg 1510 still a very potent plane also have the bf109 g2 very nice uh not sure you can get this i think it was only a, a, i think they brought it back for a limited time g91 r4 kind of like the german one you got good earth to ground weapons with your nods pretty dog shit though for uh realistic battles ariete this thing a lot of people say this is fantastic i haven't actually played it i can't really give a comment on that might be worth picking up actually the f 104s ta turkish air force version at 10.7 this thing used to be quite good but then they updated it to 11.0 for some reason and made it kind of a uh, it's it get it just gets up to to fight like f-16s all the time and this thing is absolute it gets m9ps basically i guess you do get m7es but you lose your ability to take a gun i'd stay way clear of this so france as i said for the americans or the soviets i can't remember which one p40 premiums are always a good pickup again though very low rewards for the silver lion and rp i don't know why this is probably the best premium p40 though is the f model so it's basically the later war one with a more powerful engine i believe or something like that yak 3 this thing's pretty decent kind of like the la5 and the la7 though it is mm, you kind of have to force enemies to make a mistake and then capitalize on it quite hard for you to set up kills yourself it's it loses power over 5k that's basically it f6c that was an event vehicle not very good the yak 90 again a revent vehicle b47 d22 this thing might this is probably a very good pickup to be honest it's both good in air realistic as a vulture and it's good in close real uh, it's good in ground realistic as well for close air support one of the biggest lacking things for france is a good closer support um plane i guess you do get the three bombs on this thing but they're only 500 pounders so this is probably the best closer support apart from maybe the f6 but yeah i'd highly recommend picking up the p47d in the french tech tree the naval this can't be got anymore i don't think this thing is not very good while you do have quite a lot of options in terms of firepower the performance is pretty lacking the vartos again lamau don't even think about these the milan not worth it at all in my opinion the mirage as well also pretty bad i think they did change some things to make it slightly better but it's still very bad in terms of well it's very bad con compared to some of the other top tier premiums so i definitely would not get the um the f1c it just gets no it's not very good let's just leave it at that so i don't even know what these planes are i've never played them they don't really seem that interesting that might just be me being ignorant well probably i'm just being ignorant this is a new plane coming in the battle pass i'll give you a spoiler not worth it the pomeris or whatever it's called piorimsky 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 it's finnish 
it's not an Indo-European language, so that gives me a free pass. That I can't pronounce it. Anyway, pretty decent playing. A 20mm in the nose and then two 50 cows in the engine cowling. It's a good playing. It's probably the better, one of the better rank 3 premiums in the game. The G6, it's a good pickup. Got a nice camouflage. It is a G model. Beer from an arm though, so it's quite heavy. Made for taking on enemy bombers rather than enemy fighters. So it's not going to have a good performance as a G2 or an F4. But it's a decent pickup. Still very, very good. The 105E. This thing's pretty good for Cass. Mm, it's it's alright. The This thing's pretty bad. J35A. Doesn't get flurs at 9.7. So you can imagine just how dog shit this thing is. The Saab J35XS, probably one of my favourite premiums in the game. I don't have it, but I had it on test drive and I played the absolute crap out of it. First of all, it's 10.7, so you avoid the 12.0 meta at the minute. We also get six um, AM9Js, technically RB24Js, but they're basically just copies of AM9Js. Very, very good playing. Do you get 12 flurs as well? 12 doesn't sound like a lot, but if you just pop one... It's you have to be careful with them, but it is a very rewarding plane to play. And finally, the Israelis, not that much here to choose from. Premium Spitfire, it's pretty good. Well, it's a 50 cal Spitfire with a Merlin engine. It's pretty decent. It's obviously not the best. You get a unique weapon. You get these these rocket things. I don't even know what they are. They're either German or Swiss. Anyway, cool camouflage. It's just a premium Spitfire, basically. It's a pack premium as well, isn't it? So it's probably going to be on sale in the next couple of weeks. F84. It's the later model of the F84 with the swept wings. I haven't actually used this a great deal. I guess it's quite good for closer support. It's pretty fast. Might actually get a nurse born and be quite a good grinder. F4E. Or A40, sorry, but yeah been a long day boys i apologize this thing's quite good got an extended tail which in real life was used to protect the engine like this thing would get hot rather than here so an enemy an incoming heat seeking missile would hit the back and hopefully do less damage to the engine quite a good tactic we also have my favorite loadout for this point is this one we get two wall eyes and then a single gbu8 so this is a £2,000 bomb. I don't know what the wall eyes are. Wall eyes are 510 kilos of explosive filler. So you get three easy kills basically in ground realistic battles. One of my favourite cast jets. We also have the Kafir Canard. Again, it's a battery rating 10.7. So you avoid the 12.0 F-16 meta. You don't get the best weapons to be honest. You get two defers under the nose. Well, under the engine routes i guess we also only have two missiles we have the aim 9d the sharia 2s and the aim 9g's so the g's are all right they're not the best do you get quite a lot of air to ground dumb bombs as well not really that uh it's not a good premium plane in terms of firepower to be honest it's kind of like the f5c where you're relying mainly on your guns rather than your missiles I wouldn't really recommend this plane, to be honest. We do get 36 counters measures, so you're not totally useless. Israel kind of gets screwed, to be honest. It's not got the best premiums. But anyway, boys, that covers it for this quick premium guard for the aviation tree. I apologize for it not being the most in-depth, but as I said, I've not got that much time right now. Just trying to pass on a little bit of uh, my knowledge, or quote-unquote knowledge. Anyway, boys, as always, thank you very much for my YouTube members. Thank you to everyone who has watched this video and as always I'll see you in the next one.